Okay, today is January 16th, and we are doing some video footage of a 1964 Sea Blue Bug. Uh, we're going to drive it a couple of miles here and just show that the instrumentation works and car shifts nice and does everything a 64 v dub supposed to do. I'm going to hand the camera over to my co-pilot here, and we're going to fire it up original key to the car and the if we can get that in focus um, it's the original key code for 64 which starts with an SU SU 16 that's been with the car since day one okay started right up Probably a three-point turn with my driving ability, but we'll see. Let's see what we can do. As of today, the car has 64,254 miles. That's original mileage to the car. Uh, really well documented since the original owner purchased it. And uh, the car drives and tracks and steers as good as it looks will show once we get rolling here that the uh, speedometer works uh, the gas gauge works on the car and it's accurate believe it or not it has the original dealer installed AM radio which also works we'll turn that on here in just a minute uh, original Van Wick uh, shifting diagram which was installed at the dealership when the car was new And we're off to the races. 40 horsepower. As much racing as you can do with 40 horse, that's what we're going to do. And today is a little chilly. A little chilly here in Westland, Oregon. But I like doing driving videos in cold weather because then you kind of get a, a good idea of how the car runs and accelerates in the cold climate. Sometimes old cars can get a little bit cold blooded. All right, so we are off here. There's our first gear and a shift in the second. And a speed bump coming up here. Take it nice and slow. There we go. And hopefully it comes through the camera uh, just how nice this car shifts and how nice the engine sounds. You know, you hear people with air-cooled Volkswagens talking about, you know, runs like a Swiss watch. Well, this is, this is the definition of runs like a Swiss watch. Uh, this car is absolutely phenomenal mechanically. AM radio demo here. Winter storm in North Carolina. As much as eight to twelve inches of snow. Eight to twelve inches. Probably get a couple stations in an AM, but it's kind of neat that the original radio still works and the original speaker to the car works. Uh, the dash, all the dash paints, original, original grab handle. The car has gotten an exterior repaint only. Uh, the door jams, the engine bay, front trunk, all that good stuff is all factory paint. So just an exterior only. Uh, talk to the gentleman that did all the body work and paint, all the prep. And the car didn't need any body work. Uh, it just had you know, kind of faded Southern California baked sea blue paint and it needed a freshening up. And it's got all original glass, including the windshield, which is unusual. 
original floor mats, original carpet, uh, original headliner, and there'll be plenty of pictures up of the interior details. Uh, just a really well-preserved, low-mileage car that got a little bit of cosmetic work done with the theme being to preserve the originality as much as possible. So you'll see in the photos and the walk around video, it still has the original running boards. Uh, the bumpers are really nice and straight. The bumper guards are nice and straight. It, uh, a lot of people see this car and they think it's a full restoration just because, it, because of the overall look, but but it's not. It's got a, a ton of originality going for it. Would you like me to try to find a better radio station? I can't find a 80s hair rock station, even though I'm going to try anyways. Probably not happening. AM style. signals work. Uh, all the electrical on this car works really good. The only thing I can't demo today are the windshield wipers. Just because I don't like to run the wipers without there being water on the windshield. I don't want to put wiper marks in an original gorgeous piece of glass that still has the VW logo on it. But uh, everything electrically works. High beams, low beams, turn signals, brake lights, License plate light and honkity honk. Got a working six volt horn. Added bonus. Uh, this car is all original wiring. Uh, like I said, still six volt electrical system um, as it was built in 1964. And and I've had really good luck with six volt electrical systems. You know, this car is, uh, doesn't have any uh, corrosion or anything with the wiring. So all the contacts are nice and clean. And I'll put up some pictures of the, the behind the dash and you can just see how pristine the wiring is. Nothing's been hacked, nothing's been spliced. Radio was dealer installed. So that was all done back in 1964. The antenna was installed at the same time. So. You know, everything is just as it was intended to be by the factory. And there's third gear. You hear the transmission just just nice and quiet, just shifts like a like butter. There's fourth. We're probably speeding through a 25 mile an hour zone, but no. Uh, yeah, the transmission's just really nice and smooth. Car shifts great, stops great idle screen. Um, just an absolute pleasure to drive. And we're going to go up a hill. Let's see if 40 horsepower can get us up a hill. It did. And that concludes our voyage in a 1964 V-Dub.
Okay, we're going to do a walk around video of the Sea Blue 64 bug. Got kind of lucky with the weather today. It's dry. It's a little cold, but it's dry, so we'll take it. And before I open up engine lids and doors and trunks, we'll just do a 360 walk around show you all the different angles and how great a 64 Beetle this vintage looks in the sea blue. I think it just really shows the lines off. Not too many colors in my opinion that can can hang with with sea blue. And if you notice I've always thought this was kind of an interesting detail on a sea blue. Uh, these cars always had a specific uh, kind of an eyeball appeal to them. And I was always drawn to sea blue long before I owned one um, as to why the cars just seemed to pop. And I, I've got it nailed down to, I think, the wheel and tire combo particularly the two-tone color choice that Volkswagen used from the factory. And I'll zoom in on the wheels and I'll show you what I'm talking about, but there's a really unique color on the outer hoop, the outer portion of the wheel. It's called ice blue. And it kind of looks white until you get right up on it. And then you'll notice it's got this very small hint of blue, hence the color, ice blue. And what they did on a sea blue is they ran the ice blue outer hoop against a black inner and then of course a proper tire for this vintage Beetle would be a baby white wall. Those are from Coker, the Firestones one inch white wall. Uh, this car is would not be correct with a big wide white wall. I know they look cool, but this is a, a correct kind of that that day one OEM showroom floor type look. This is the correct tire that'd be on a 64. I'll zoom in on this antenna. This is a really neat antenna. Um, this is called the Red Tip. Go figure where they came up with that name. There's the little uh, red emerald on the end of the antenna. It's got a red tip antenna. It's got a beautiful haggis. They call this a pear-shaped mirror because if you kind of look at it, if you imagine it tilted 90 degrees from where it's positioned now, it would look like a pear. And you can see the haggis logo there on the back. This car left the dealership with a driver's side mirror, driver's side only. There's no mirror on the passenger side. And then it got the radio option, which I will demo as well. So we got tires, uh, we covered tires. You'll notice it's got kind of a neat accessory. Uh, these were not installed at the dealer when the car was new. These were added at a later date. But it's got these clamshell. A lot of people refer to them as clamshell, I think, just because of the shape. But those are, those are a period correct accessory that you would have seen back in the 50s and 60s on an air cooled v, v dub. You see the chrome is is perfect. There's no pitting in it whatsoever in those. This is a 100,000 kilometer badge and that's an original one as opposed to reproduction. It's kind of a neat little accessory there. Okay, and the running boards are original to the car, and 
the way you can tell that they're original was well, a couple details, but if you look at the edges, the rubber on these shrinks, it shrinks back over, over time. And that mat gets slightly shorter over the years. And you can kind of see where it's shrunk up. Um, and it just speaks to the, the originality of the car and the character of the car. The fact that it has the original running board still, original door handles, uh, the body trim is still original to the car. Um, it just got a repaint on the outside only. Those are the original front uh, turn signals with the original chrome. It's got the proper 1964 headlight buckets. And there's a specific part number that crosses over. You can actually date code these to make sure they're correct for the era. And uh, these both match, by the way. Reads SB19, SB20, SB21. And you'll notice it's got a California black plate up front, but an Oregon plate in the rear. And what Oregon will allow you to do if you get a classic car registration is it'll actually let you run well it's optional to not have a front plate at all or if you have a period correct plate that you'd like to run uh, you can you can do that as well which is why I've got the California one on it this is the original license plate to the car that it was issued in 1964 in California and I have a pair of these uh, when I purchased the car it still had the front and the rear I just got the front one installed but but the pair come with the car and it's kind of neat because you can actually see it's got 63 stamped in it and the IQL designation um, met a fellow that was from California and had done quite a bit of homework on California license plates and apparently the IQL translates to uh, Southern California I can't remember if he specifically said Santa Barbara but he could tell based on that IQL lettering that that was a correct plate for a 1964 vehicle that was sold new in Santa Barbara, California. I don't like I said I don't know if that's just specifically Santa Barbara or just Southern California in general. I'm sure there's some folks out there that know the answer to that, but uh, original plates front and rear. The rear plate is just as nice as the front one is. They match. And now I'm going to pause the camera and I'm going to start opening up some trunk lids and some deck lids. And we're back. Went ahead and opened up trunks and doors and engine lids. And now we'll get into some of the the nooks and crannies. This car's got the original spare tire and that wheel is original paint and you can see that ice blue that I referred to on the two-tone wheels. Uh, you can see that ice blue with the two-tone and it's got the original jack got the original uh, sea blue sea blau my German needs work <laughs> L360 and it's got the original stickers and the tire pressure that runs the windshield washer squirter um, all the original stickers are intact all the hoses are intact it's kind of neat to have that it's got this neat I've always thought this was a neat feature here it's got this tire I'm guessing that at some point in time when it got a set of tires replaced, Sears, which used to be a huge department store um, and actually had a tire, uh, tire department, a part of the business was uh, doing tires and I think alignments and brakes. Uh, at some point in time, the car went through Sears and I could probably pull a date off. Well, 
I need glasses. Oh, February 13th, 1976, it looks like. The font's kind of hard to read. Mileage at the time. Oh, this is cool. Current mileage at the time. Looks like... 30,987. It's really faint. It definitely starts with a three, so... Back in... 1976 looks like it got its first set of replacement tires at just a hair over 30,000 miles so it's got that sticker which has been there for a long time this is all original paint in here in the front trunk it has the original wiring cover these are made out of a heavy cardboard these usually don't last or stand up well to time Mother Nature kicks in and moisture usually takes them out. It's got the original front trunk liner as well. It's still intact and uh, doing its job. So there's a look at the front trunk, spare wheel, tire, uh, stickers, and jack. Let's see, we'll go around here give you a shot of the interior as it looks from the passenger side. The car still has the original door panels and the seat covers have been replaced. The, the top of the seats, the Southern California heat cooked them and it needed some upholstery work so what they did, this was very well thought out they left everything original and they only replaced the seat covers as needed. So the front seats have been recovered. The rear seat, the car has seat belts as you'll probably see. The rear seat's been recovered. I mentioned Southern California heat cooking the, cooking the seats. Um, that's probably a good reference as far as what the top of the seats look like. That's the area under the back window. It's been left original. You can see where the material has gotten hot and it started to pull back. And the headliner is absolutely perfect, including the visors. And I can see where you'd, you'd, you'd kind of go back and forth about putting a headliner in it or maybe just replacing that strip. I'm a big sucker for originality. I love that. That's just my two cents worth on the subject, but I think that was a good decision. Should just, just leave it as the factory had installed it back in 1964, but the door panels are perfect. Hey, how you doing? Uh, it's a 64. Try to take advantage of the weather and make a video and not get stuck in the rain. So far, it's been going pretty good. Yeah, you got that right. Man, that thing looks like better than new. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, uh, people that see this video are probably going to think I paid you off to say that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You're more than welcome to look at the car, by the way. I'm just doing a walk around. Uh, it's going up for sale here soon, and figured it'd be a good day to to get it out and stretch its legs. And there's a shot of the engine bay there. Hey, take it easy. This is the original number matching motor. Uh, 64? It's in mint condition. Is oh, it is, yeah. Oh, cute. Thank like you. Herbie, well, it's kind of like Herbie. Yeah, it's kind of like Herbie. <laughs> My brother would think, oh, he would love it. <laughs> uh, it's, I gotta take a picture of it. 
Uh, yeah, you're more than welcome to. Um, wow. This, uh, and I'm by no means a professional uh, photographer, oh, far from it, yeah. but I'm actually making a video here oh. of, oh, uh, that'll end up on YouTube eventually. Are you going to sell or are you just collecting them? Yeah, yeah, this one's going up for sale. Oh. And that's the reason why I got it out today is to do some videos of it driving and you know kind of like a walk around so people can see what we're what we're looking at. Are you from California? Uh, the car is from Southern California. It came up to Oregon about four years ago, but it was it was born and raised in Santa Barbara, which is where it spent its life. Can't beat it. Can't beat the weather. It's not inexpensive, but boy, it's pretty. California is expensive, but it's nice to visit. Yeah. Yeah, I'll stay out of your way there. My brother is, um, one of my brothers is very ill right now. Oh! Well, if this will boost his mood. Stage four cancer. It's, oh. It's, it's heart wrenching. It's heart well, take as many pictures and send them. And think he put a enjoy. smile on his face. <laughs> yeah, I do. Absolutely. Oh, that's awesome. Well. This is an old uh, oil change sticker. Now, this one's faded. Um, they call it a bug back then still? They did. This one's a little tricky to read here, but I think this uh, indicates an oil change done Isn't cute, the at 49,700 and something, something, something. That's kind of neat. You can kind of see the Santa Barbara address there. And there's the uh, date and the oil change. Uh, mileage is indicated there. There was another sticker there at one point in time that is no longer there. Just a little sticky residues left. Um, you'll see how nice the, the door openings are. This is all factory paint, original door panel, and these mat pockets still have their elastic. Sometimes what'll happen is these get saggy and they kind of they kind of droop away from the panel. Those are nice and tight. Let's see if I can get up underneath the door. I'll show you the bottom of the doors. We talked about running boards on the other side. I'll give you a look at the running board on the driver's side here. Car's got beautiful door gaps. Door shut just perfect. All the panels line up just like they should from the factory. And it's got original carpet and it's got original floor mats. It's got the bambus tray to put your ray bands on. Your N95 masks can be stored there if you choose to do so. Just a honest, original car, unaltered. Thank you. Hey, my pleasure. Have a, Have a nice Sunday. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna start it. All right, let's see if I can multitask. Probably not.
can hear the choke kick down right there. Everything just kicks off. The uh, electric choke operates like butter. Kicks on cold in the morning just like it should. Kicks down just like it should as the engine warms up. And I think that covers everything I could think of for an exterior walk around. Kind of filling you guys in on some of the finer details of a 64 bug. If you hung around for the entire video, uh, appreciate your time. Talk to you later. Bye.